Welcome to episode 34 of the Independent Agent Podcast. I am Justin with my uh, lovely brother Jordan sitting right next to me. So lovely. And today I'm drinking Michelob Ultra. We'll see. Today I prepared a gin fizz. A what? A gin fizz. Okay. It is two parts gin, one part lemon. One or like three quarter part, uh, simple syrup, and then uh, it was club soda, like an ounce or two of club soda on top. You were supposed to do it with an egg white shaken, so you get that creamy thing. And I forgot to get eggs at the store, so we did so that. Are we using aviator gin? No, we're not using aviator gin. Why not? Because Ryan Reynolds is too attractive for me. Oh, me too. I know. All right. Okay. Not bad. That's pretty good. Yeah. I'm I'm surprised, actually. I, I could use it to be more sour, you know? Yeah, it's almost like I feel like something was missing from the drink. The egg white? Yes. <laughs> Is the egg white for show only, or does that add to... Well, I mean, there's a flavor profile to it, but also a texture profile. That's what's missing. Mm-hmm. You You had one job. I did. <laughs> Failed at the grocery store. Anyway. Okay, question one. I coordinate all the technology initiatives for the agency, and one thing we've gone back and forth on for the last few years is whether or not to adopt a CRM system. Investing in a CRM presents certain challenges, but I don't know that we're getting everything we need from the agency management system. Do you currently use a CRM, and how would you vet the CRM systems before choosing one? Uh, we do use them. We use one for Goodman Insurance. Uh, we use Salesforce. We've used it for a very long time. Total CSR we use Insightly, but we are switching over to Salesforce shortly. Uh, in regard to the agency side, I think you need a CRM uh, for sales. I don't know that that Salesforce is. I mean, it depends what you're trying to do with it. If you just want prospect management in there. Uh, yeah, it's fine. You could go with or without it. It's good. It's helpful to have something. I don't think any agency management system that I've seen does an effective job at letting you utilize, um, like a CRM system type functions for the mass, you know, uh, Salesforce does a good job with that, but there's a lot of systems now that are integrating, uh, their their CRMs with different email marketing campaign companies um, that also integrate with you know different like PPC and SEO strategies. So the, the one that I'm thinking now again I haven't I haven't seen them, um, but I, I know there's good guys behind it. Is Better Agency? Uh, they just released. I haven't used it. I've looked at it briefly. It looks pretty neat. I actually sent it to Mike and Brian to have them take a look at it. Oh. See if it's something that we want to use. Uh, yeah, the CRMs are only as good as you, as the output that comes from them, right? So if you don't have data, you don't have good input, you're not going get, to get good output. Or so I, I guess I said that wrong. They're only as good as the, the, the input that you put into them. So if you don't have quality data that you know how to do something with, it's just a file management system or, or just a um, customer management system. And essentially, it's a cleaner version than the... Um, the uh, uh, AMS systems that are out there. So, yeah, find something. I haven't been impressed by by a ton, but I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing tentatively with Better Agency. Yeah, so I I think you'll see. There's actually a couple agency management systems that now integrate with Salesforce. Um, that's recent as of I think 60 days ago. Um. And, um, and and depending upon uh, what you're trying to do, I think that's helpful. Salesforce also has some templated uh, tied to agencies, so you have to do less heavy lifting. We've talked on a previous podcast about how we had to bring in a consultant to do all the, the build out. Um, it's also important that you, you know, and, and I'm going to butcher all of this, um, but if you can tie not only your your 
you know, Salesforce or Insightly or whatever um, lead management system that you're using, right? If you can tie that to the agency management system, that's a benefit. But also, if at those key points, it can do what you want it to do. And uh, Trent is great, and that's what we're, we're when we're making the shift on the the training company side of things with Total CSR, making it remove the touches that have to happen on behalf of our salespeople. That's important. Making follow up built in, making sure that we can lead score. I think there's a tremendous amount of benefit uh, from that. Yeah, and based upon triggers, right? So. If something moves from, uh, you know, a status where it was, you know, application received to submitted to carriers, right? You don't need to do anything. What it'll automatically do is trigger an email to go out and send an email to the insured and say, hey, we just got this out to market. Here are the markets we went to. Here's what this process is going to look like. You know, we're, we're out to market 90 days in advance, but you probably won't start seeing any pricing for about 60 days. This is how the system works and why. And just have these automated triggers um, that go in so you don't skip a beat and you don't miss the opportunity to connect with the insured. Yeah. And past that, um, just as far as vetting the companies, one, the best way to do, again, we mentioned last episode, IAOA, you'll get tremendous feedback. You'll have some people that are just close friends with, with some companies, but at the same time, you'll get the pros, the cons, and just some more honest feed- feedback from agency owners who've already taken a plunge in a certain technolo- technology initiative. So I'd go that direction. The other thing is uh, Olivia on our team uh, just finished two eBooks, one on identifying technologies and how to vet them and actually go step-by-step step through the process. That's available on our website. And also a follow-up to the implementation side of things. So it's not just... Uh, finding something that you want is, as far as a lead management uh, system, but also is that going to work with the people in the office and will they leverage it? So you've got to get the buy-in before you even do this. And and I'll give you a perfect example. You could have a producer who is really all about technology and wanting to have something that he or she can access from anywhere. And then you have another producer who says, I got a Rolodex and I use Outlook and I send calendar things to myself and I'm never going to change. And if you have a couple of those, let's say, more uh, senior generational types that aren't going to change and only one person that's going to leverage it and that system is going to cost you $25,000 a year, you have to give serious thought uh, to whether or not you're going to pursue that. So the adoption matters too. So before you even go and find an alternative to what you're doing, you need to make sure that the pain point is is rough enough for the agency and that you are going to get adoption throughout the agency. So it's not 70% adoption, it's 100% adoption amongst your producers that they will actually leverage it. Past that, you have to take a look at deliverability. We went, and to give an example, we went away from Salesforce to another platform on the agency side of things to try and improve deliverability. The platform and tied to the email marketing that was going out, it ended up just killing a lot of our email marketing. And we have since gone back and doing what we were doing and it was very effective. So deliverability is huge. So when you're asking other agency owners what they think, I would also ask about deliverabilities of emails that are being sent through the platform. Um, Jordan, I know you have a lot of background on that. Yeah, I mean, we just, so originally we had utilized Salesforce. I don't know if they still, well, they still do, obviously, because we've gone back to it. They have like an internal emailing um, system, which is pretty archaic, but if you customize it right, it's actually the deliverability and and the response you get from it is phenomenal. Um, But we switched over to a system that was going to be far more automated. It was actually Salesforce's system. It was... um, What's it start with a P? Do you remember? I've blocked it out. Yeah. Uh, I'll think I just was thinking about it two seconds ago. I just goldfish brain. Um, but we switched over to theirs and then it was worse. So then we switched over to Act On, and Act On was supposed to be better, and that was even worse. Yeah. Right. And so then 
just the guys said, well, let's go try the Salesforce one again. I thought, well, it's not going to work. And uh, Pardot, that's what it was. Yeah. Pardot was a Salesforce one. Um, and so now we're back to the regular Salesforce one and it's working great. Now, Salesforce also has the one that we're switching to for total CSR. Uh, they have a second one. So the Pardot's supposed to be a B2B, even though it wasn't very good for B2B. Um, maybe it was supposed to be B2C. I don't know. Um, but they have they have another one that that's that we're going to be switching to. So once we get up and going on that, I can fill you in there. But and and that one actually will tie into social media and other advertising campaigns. But one of the challenges, so you know, we went with Acton, and we left because of deliverability. It just killed everything. I got an email a few weeks ago. I'm sure you got the same one saying we want you back. We fixed some things on deliverability. I want a big check back. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. I agree with you. But. And, you know, we're not going to get it. So, no. I again, get your team members on board. Check with a group like IAOA to vet it. Um, and then also look at what you're really trying to implement. And then if you have somebody who can, can figure out how it ties into other agency processes to eliminate touches, um, and and automate uh, certain tasks so that producers have to follow a certain roadmap in a renewal process. So, yep. Yeah. All right. I'm a commercial lines producer at an agency and also share management responsibilities with another person for a team of 20. The other manager has resigned and I am being told they will not be hiring a replacement. I still have a book of business and I don't feel that I can effectively manage 20 people on my own. Ownership isn't going to change their mind, so I have to figure out a better way to manage the entire team. What areas would you start with? Well, are you getting paid to manage them? That's my first question, because your book and management should be two separate comp roles. Yeah. Right? And if they don't want to replace that person, then they should talk about increasing your pay for said responsibility. Now, if that's something you don't want and you want to produce instead, that's an entirely separate conversation because I promise you, if you have a decent book and you say, you know what? I really don't want to manage. Why don't you hire someone else that wants to manage 20 people and I'll just go back and just work on my book or I can leave and go take my book elsewhere, right? Um, and again, not like it's that easy to just walk away with your book, but you get the picture. Uh, so I, I would have candid conversation again w w with the ownership there, but I, I, I feel most people can self-manage if they are a capable quality individual, unless they're brand new, they don't need a tremendous amount of touches. I mean, our staff, we meet with once a week, right? And they'll come to, with questions but there's not a tremendous amount of oversight that's needed, you know? So uh, I think that 20 people is, is more than we have. on the, We've got about 10 on the, the agency side. Um, but I don't, I just don't, I don't think it's going to be that much if you, if you schedule it right. If you set up every Monday, we're having these meetings. Uh, this, this person is in charge of this and, and create little sub subgroups, right? If you're forced to have to, uh, take on extra roles, then force other people to have to do the same thing and then create a bigger problem for the ownership, right? I'm not saying just be a jerk about it, but if you really don't have the capacity to do that and it's 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 um, hindering your ability to go sell and, and write business, I would say, you know, pick two people in the other groups and say, okay, you're now in charge of this and this. Maybe you can get them, pay them an extra five grand or something for doing it, and they can be happy and, and figure something out like that. Yeah. Uh, to his point, let's even assume you are getting paid for the job to be half, right? And they get rid of one. They owe you the compensation for the other person if they want you to manage that team. That's, that's not a made up thing. They've taken someone's job and given it to you and not compensated for you. So I would look at it from that angle. The next part is, as, as Jordan mentioned, going back to them and saying to your, your employees that are under your purview, hey, I'm going to have somebody run this team lead. This is who it's going to be. And if you're having to work extra for no pay, you're going to pass you know a certain amount of that responsibility on. 
But past that, if you're KPI driven and you have a set, uh, let's say a set group of processes like we do in our agency, so everyone has to follow this, what you may need is someone who's in charge of auditing everybody like we have a Linda. And that person, their additional responsibility is auditing everybody to make sure the processes are followed. So the processes are followed and we have our set KPIs and management is best is made based on what's happening with those KPIs. If someone's falling short, here's what happens. Yes, you have your your Monday meetings or, or what have you, uh, but you, you have to get really responsible with your time. You are not there to, at that point, deal with bickering of employees. So you also have to make sure the culture's in the right place. For example, you have two employees that are problems and gossips. You sit them down and say, guess what? I now have to manage 20 people. I don't have time to deal with this this riffraff you're causing in the agency anymore. So there's now a zero tolerance policy for this. So you either fix this problem, and so I don't have to deal with it, or I won't have to deal with it because you won't be here. So you get rid of those people. You've got your KPIs in place. You've maybe assigned one person to audit for those processes to make sure nobody's slipping in the work product, and I think you're going to be okay. And I'd still go back to management. I would never add that much work to someone's plate for someone who had left and said, that's now your job responsibility and there's no compensation for it, right? That's really ownership's job when when we lose a person and we don't have a solution to backfill the work. That's ownership's job to figure out. I'm the one who gets the big carrot at the end of this, not the employee. And so I would hold your ground, but if you need to be tactical to buy yourself some time, that's what I suggest you do. Groovy. All right. All right. Well, if you guys have other beverage recommendations, Jordan at TotalCSR.com. If you have more questions, Justin at TotalCSR.com. If you want to stop by the office and have a drink. Or play some golf. Or play some golf in the simulator. Just let us know. Or we can actually, it's beautiful. Well, we can't have we can't have guests, guests yet. No, but we can have guests at the office. So, That's true. Uh, if you know, in all seriousness, if you ever want to cruise by, just uh, give us a shout and come hang out. So anyway, I uh, hope you are all staying safe and having somewhat of a decent summer out there. Talk to you next time. Cheers. Thank you.